Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with validating the password part three. So the validation for password tutorial series continues. Each tutorial is going to now feature one specific rule for password validation, and today we're going to be covering checking if there is a sequence of numbers in your password, whether it's a sequence of ascending numbers or descending numbers. And what I mean by sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or maybe 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Because some websites don't like that. So let's get right into it. So we've got a string here called password and this is going to be password123. This is representing our user input. Then we've got system.out.println contains no number sequence, password, free and true. This is going to be calling the method we're about to create. Let's look at our method. Public static boolean. So this is going to be returning a true or a false. Contains no number sequences. And it takes in a string, which we're going to call input, an int, which is called max amount, and a boolean, which is called positive. So for string input, that's going to be the password we want to validate. Int max amount is going to be how big can a sequence be? For instance, 1, 2, 3 would be a sequence of 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be a sequence of 5. So this method allows you to be more specific with what you want. And then boolean positive means do you want to check for an ascending or descending sequence? So if you want to check for both, you could call this method twice. If you only want to not allow one type of sequence, maybe only ascending sequences, then you can do so as well. So at the start of our method, we want to do an if statement. If inputs.matches, then this rejects pattern, which will be in the description below. And before that, we put an exclamation mark. So what's going on here? Well, basically, we're going to check to see if our desired string we wish to validate matches that pattern but then we're going to put an exclamation mark so in this if statement we're actually looking for a false and not a true so we're checking if our user input doesn't match this pattern and this pattern can simply tell us whether or not there is a digit located in a string and the reason is if there's no digit in the password we're validating, there's no point doing all of the other steps to check if there's a sequence or not, because there's no digits, therefore there can be no sequence. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define three integers right now. We're going to have last int, current digit, and sequence count. Last digit and current digit will be set to minus one, and sequence count will be set to zero. Last digit's going to store the last digit we checked, Current digit's going to store the current digit we're checking, and sequence counts will keep a track of what the current sequence is, whether or not it's a sequence of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever amount of digits. And we're going to set these both to minus 1, because this is the value we want them to be if they haven't been assigned anything. We can't use 0, because 0 could be a character someone adds to their password, but minus 1 can't be a character in a password because minus one would be two characters therefore it can be allowed therefore it works in this case because an int isn't the same as a character you could have an integer of 200 but in the context of characters that would be 200 so it'd be three characters then we're going to have an if statement and it's going to be if positive and then we're going to do an else statement and then inside the if statement we're going to do a for loop which is for int i equals zero, i less than input dot length and i plus plus, this is a standard loop for your array for loop. And before you say, Max, you're using a string, not an array, well I'm gonna burst your bubble. A string is basically a character array. And basically we're going to have two different for loops and each for loop will check whether or not we're going to check for an ascending sequence or a descending sequence. So we're going to make the ascendant sequence check first, then we'll go and change a bit to make a descending one. Now, inside the for loop, we're going to do an if statement. We're going to do if character.isDigit inputs.char at i and beforehand put an exclamation mark. So we're going to check if 
the dig if the current character we're checking in this string isn't a digit. If it's not a digit, then it's broken a sequence. Let's say we've got a password and it's password 123A4. Well, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it's got 1234 in it. But there's an A between the 3 and the 4, and therefore any potential ascending sequence has just been broken. And so what we're going to do is we're going to reset our three variables for sequence checking back to their default. Inside the else statement, we're going to do current digit equals character dot get numerical value input dot char at i. What are we doing? Well, since because of our if statement here, we know that the current character we're looking at in the input is a digit, we're going to assign it to our current digit integer. Underneath that, we're actually going to do an if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if last digit is not equal to minus one, which means our last digit has been assigned a value, which means we are currently checking at least a second digit of a potential sequence. And I say potential sequence because the next bit of code is going to determine if we're currently in some form of sequence where each digit is one greater than the digit beforehand. So what we can do is we can do if last digit plus one is equal to current digit, then we increase sequence count and then we assign last digit to be whatever the current digit is. And so what's going on here is, let's say we've got a password and it's password 123. And we're currently checking for 2, which means our last digit is equal to 1 and current digit is equal to 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, which it is, which means so far in this password, what we've checked so far, we have found a sequence of two digits and therefore we're going to increment the counter by one because there are two digits that have a difference of one between them and they're next to each other and if this continues then we will eventually hit a point where it's invalid which is why after this we have a if sequence count is equal to max amount so if the sequence is equal to the maximum sequence count we are allowing in our passwords and we return a false because who cares what, what the rest of the password is we know based on this information that we have now there is a sequence that is longer than what we allow therefore the password is false there's no redeem in it and for the else statement which is going to be attached to our if last digit is not equal to minus one we're just going to do last digit equals current digit and that's basically it. Well, I would say basically it's, but we've only checked for an ascending sequence. We need to check for descending, as this tutorial says we can also check for a descending sequence. So in the else statement, for the if positive statement, we're going to do our for loop. And we're going to do for int i equals input dot length minus one. i is greater than or equal to zero and i minus minus. Basically, we're just going to be looping through this array backwards. And the reason why I want to loop through it backwards is we're checking for a descending sequence and the easiest way I can think about going about doing this is just going through the array backwards. So that's what we're going to do. Then we're going to do if the current character we're checking isn't a digit, then we can just assign last digit, current digit, and sequence count to minus one, minus one, and zero. This is very similar to what we're doing before. In fact, there's only a couple of minor changes and this code works. So this could be an even better way to go about implementing ascending and descending sequence checking. And then in the else statement, we're going to again do current digit equals character dot get numerical value input dot char at i. And then we're going to check if last digit is not equal to minus one. And inside that, we can then do if last digit plus one equals current digit. And then we can do sequence count plus plus then we can do last digit equals current digit. And you might be thinking, Max, why are we checking if last digit plus one is equal to current digit? We could, in theory, do a subtraction method, but we would then have to traverse through the array in the same order as before. And I thought this way was actually easier to understand. 
we're traversing through the array backwards, and let's say we're going to be checking for a sequence of 4, 3, 2, and 1. Well, let's work through this step by step. So when we analyze for 1, because we're traversing through the array backwards, current digit becomes 1. Then we do a little check and we realize, okay, there's no sequence so far. So last digit becomes 1, and then current digit becomes 2. And then we want to check if last digit plus 1 is equal to current digit. And what's 1 plus 1? It's 2. Therefore, our sequence exists. And it's set to 1, because we increment sequence count by 1. And then we go on to check the 3. And by doing so, our last digit becomes 2, and our current digit becomes 3. And then we're going to check if last digit plus 1, so that's going to be 2 plus 1, is equal to 3. And it is, so we increase our sequence count by 1 again. Because, and that means there is some form of sequence in our password. And that's why we're adding 1 and not subtracting, even though we're checking for a different type of sequence, which is a descending sequence. Because we're traversing backwards so we can do the addition. And obviously we have if sequence count equals max amount, return false because you can't redeem the password as an invalid sequence. Doesn't matter what the rest has. And the else statement for last digit not equal to 1 is last digit equals current digit. Also lastly, after the else statement for the if positive if statement, add a return true because if we successfully made it through a for loop, that means we have a valid password in the eyes of this function, which is checking if there's an ascending or descending sequence. And that's it for this tutorial. So, let's go into some examples. We're going to do password123, we're going to pass in our password. We don't want any sequences that are greater than 3, and we're going, we want it to be an ascending sequence. So let's hit Control s to save and hit play. And it says true. Why is it true? Well, we allow for a maximum of three digit sequences for ascending passwords. And 123 is an ascending sequence of three. Let's put a four on. And it returns a false. Why? Because a sequence of four is greater than a sequence of three. Now let's try and play with it. Let's do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. This is going to return a true. Why? There's no sequence of digits that ascend in a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pattern here. We got 1, 2. That's a sequence of 1. Or we got another 1, 2. That's another sequence. We got another sequence of 1, 2. And then we got a sequence of 1, 2, 3. None of these actually go over the 3 maximum we have. But if we were to input a 4 there, it becomes a false. So, let's try something else. Let's do 4321, and we're going to put in a false. And this is going to return false. Why does it return false? Well, we're checking for a descending sequence, and the maximum is 3. And 4321 is a descending sequence of 4 digits, not 3. Therefore, this is invalid. Let's do 543. Then we're going to do 678. And that returns true because we have, firstly, we have a descending sequence of three digits, which is 5, 4, and 3. And then we have an ascending sequence of 6, 7, and 8. But that doesn't even matter because we're not checking for an ascending sequence, we're only checking for descending sequences. Let's just check password by itself. Returns are true because there's no sequences at all. And that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. And be sure to subscribe for more Java tutorials. There will be more password validation tutorials coming soon. So be sure to stay tuned. And if you've got a suggestion, leave it in the comments.